Welcome to the Shuffle Curious Podcast. I'm your host, Patty Lynch. Have you ever seen an amazing shuffler at a show or festival and wondered, how did they get started? How did they develop their skills? And who are they beyond the dance floor? Well, that's exactly what we're exploring in the show. We'll dive into the personal experiences of the dancers that make up our beloved community. We'll be learning more about who they are and what makes this dance so special to them. So with that, let's jump into the show and let's get curious together. This is episode 27 of the Shuffle Curious podcast featuring Carolina Flores, community leader of Boss BPM, Shuffle Therapy, and a Shuffle Dance instructor out of Boston. I hope you guys enjoy. Carol, how are you? What's up? <laughs> I am chilling. Uh, we just arrived at our Airbnb here in Chicago for what festival are we going to tomorrow? Arc Music Festival. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> our staple, our staple festival, at least for, for two years now. Did yes. you go Did you go um, one year prior from last year? The very first one. No, I didn't okay. get to. I actually <laughs> sold my ticket. Mm. I was meant to go. And I was like, last year, I was like, I have to make it happen. Got it. Got yeah. it. And you were gracious enough to invite me into your Airbnb <laughs> last year and then again this year. So hopefully I did something right. <laughs> I thought you were perfect, but we did meet somewhere else. Yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so um, the first time we met, which was kind of just super random, um, I was traveling in Colombia, specifically uh, Medellin. And uh, we both went to a meetup, but I didn't know. I saw I saw the poster that they had. So this was through Cutting Shapes Medellin. Mm -hmm. And am I saying that right? Is yeah. that is that the way Medellin. Colombia say? It? Okay, okay. Um, now they're kind of like they're Ryzen. Um, that's that's kind of their dance crew now. Um, shout out to the homies um, in Ryzen and uh, Cutting Shapes Medellin. But um, they made a flyer and. Um, I, I saw, I saw your name at like, but I didn't know what it like meant. Like, okay, is this, is this person visiting from out of the country? I saw the little like American flag next to your name and stuff like that. So I was like, I kind of, I, I think. And so, um, when I arrived, I saw you and your then boyfriend, um, Adam there. And, uh, you guys started speaking to me in English. I was like, Oh shit. Okay. Got it. You know, there's, there's Americans here. And then, um, that crew is very young, like the Medellin cutting yeah. shape. So it was, it was funny. We were like the oldest people there, you know what I mean? And I, I consider myself like, you know, young energy and a young person in general, but like they're, you know, they're like, I feel like they're right out of like high school or like college, new college students and stuff like that. So we kind of related off of that, but we were still like, throwing down and like Absolutely. jumping in the circles, like do, doing our thing. Uh, we caught a really cool mirror at the end when we were kind of parting ways as that well. That was fun, yeah. yeah. And I felt like we really connected over that, but it took me the longest time to collaborate on that with you. Do you remember, like you sent me, a, I just <laughs> yes. didn't know how to accept the, collabor uh, the collaboration yeah, request. Yeah, I remember, like it wasn't working on your phone for something. Yeah, time. and then yeah, like right, six right. months later, I like found the video again and like the blue button was there. I was like, yes, I finally get to collaborate with Carolina. So weird yeah. how that worked out. But um, no, it was, it was a very serendipitous moment and, um, but, but it led to this friendship and to be here today now and, and kicking it with you guys. Your uh, your Boston fam is here in the Airbnb. Um, I'm, I think I'm the only one outside of like that, the area that yeah. is also, you know, attending ARC with you guys. So uh, we have a lot of fun festivities. We're going to be battling tonight at the House of the Underground pre-ARC uh, shuffle tournament. So um, myself, yourself and um i think fang fang is fang. and then a couple other of your your yeah, uh, your first opponent <laughs> yes yes andrew andrew, <laughs> andrew yeah beyblade, flow, beyblade right? yeah yeah, yeah. Homie, yeah. <laughs> so yeah i'll catch i'll catch around with him um yeah who knows what will happen there but <laughs> we will see yeah yeah so it's been it's been very cool just to uh, um, reunite with all of you guys. It's always a pleasure. I saw you at ShuffleCon though um, yeah. in June um, before I started traveling and stuff like that. So that that was always a pleasure. So we have a little bit of history, and I'm and I'm I'm loving the direction that it's going. Like you, you've been a good friend ever since we met last summer. So I really appreciate you. Yeah, Same. Coming I love that we met just randomly, and that we both do our own thing in the community, and kind of like now we're just in the same places together. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's like, I think we, we choose to be within our, within, um, the spaces that, that we find ourselves in, you know what I mean? So, um, but before that, I never knew who you were. Yeah. And likewise. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 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 It's, it's so cool how it all really panned out. And, um, so I'm glad that you're on the podcast now and, um, no, thank you for having me. And I'd love to see you grow and everything that you're doing for the community. So thank you so much. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. No, you're super good vibe. So I I wanted to have you on and your good representation. You're doing a lot of cool stuff in the Boston area and have been, you know what I mean? So maybe we can kind of talk about that and elaborate on that. Um, but first, uh, I just want the audience to get to know you a little bit better um Mm -hmm. so if you could just um tell us your full name um where are you originally from Mm -hmm. how long have you been in boston and i'll have some follow-up questions for that of course well my name is carolina flores i was born in medellin colombia hence why i was there (laughs) um i've been actually visiting these kids for a long time Mm. so when i first met them they were even younger Got it. Was the oldest one um however i left colombia when i was two years old so i'm really a bostonian um, from the small Colombian community in Boston. Mm. And I've basically been in Boston all of my life. I do go to Colombia every year and I speak um, speak Spanish fluently. But for most part, it's been just that. Um, and I'm in school. I'm doing a whole lot of things, as you mentioned. Mm. But I've been in Boston for most part. I haven't left. Hopefully I get to um, try out other states in the future. Mm. Yeah. Got it. Got it. So um, how long, when did you, I guess, when did you make that move? Like you were born in Medellin, Colombia. Mm-hmm. When did you actually come to the, to the States? To the States. Yeah. The first time I was two years old. So I was a baby. Um, no one <laughs> asked me. Um, and then I actually went back to Colombia when I was about five, um, five to seven. And okay. then I came back to the States when I was 10. Um, I'm 33 now. So really I've been here all of my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, do you still have that link to the culture? And obviously you had like um, a household that was speaking, speaking Spanish, correct? Yeah. So it was um, mostly my mom and, and, and I, mm-hmm. you know what has helped me? East Boston is a small Colombian community. Really? I swear to you. Okay. There's strips of Colombian restaurants, Colombian bars. My mother doesn't even speak English like that because she just been in the small Colombian community uh, the whole time. Yeah, 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 yeah. She hasn't had to like venture out. She hasn't out. had to, no, no. And, and I've had like food accessible, Colombian food accessible for me to buy from the stores. So mm-hmm. I've never missed that, you know, so Weirdly enough, I still am immersed in the Colombian community um, while not being in Colombia. Very well, very well. And I'm sure it's easy for you to snap back into that culture when you do return to Colombia because you make pretty frequent trips, hence, you know, when we met and and everything like that. Um, Got it. Very cool to hear about. I did did not know that. Um, How long have you been shuffling for? About eight years. Uh, I will say that the first three I didn't really know what I was doing. I think like most people, <laughs> um, back then there weren't any teachers anywhere. All we had was um, our ability to observe and understand from videos and study. If you had that, if you have that kind of um, attention span, um, I, had, I had it back then. Uh, I was a personal trainer, and I saw this viral video by Gabby J. David, and I was like, I gotta learn how to do that. Mm. I have to admit though, I saw her gliding, and I was like. What is that? I learned about gliding and that's how I actually learned about shuffling. Mm, You started with gliding. Gliding was the thing that I was like floating, this floating situation that she had going on. (laughs) I was like, this looks awesome. And from there is how I started. Got it, got it. You wanted to deconstruct uh, (laughs) what what was happening uh, in front of you. Well, I think you've probably come a long way um, since that initial video and then, you know, immersing into your journey. So. I have a video of you um, that I particularly love because like the, I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, yo, Caroline is going off right now. Like, <laughs> and I love the aesthetic of the video, too, because I'll put it up on the screen and everything like that. But um, it's to a banging song. There's like a green hue to it as well. And I love this because you use so many different styles. Like you were, you were getting it with the arm flow, like before the drop, um, like using pauses and musicality, like right there. A lot of Melba, there's your glide. <laughs> yeah, it was my glide. Oh, I learned about glides. <laughs> and then you throw some shapes as well. Yeah. 
And just like your freaking stamina, dude. <laughs> like how? <laughs> Thank you. Um, half of it is definitely the fact that I, I work out hard at the gym. Mm -hmm. I think the other half is I've been gifted with this crazy drive to just go. Mm. And I feel like that with various things and, and shuffling is a great place that I've been able to channel that kind of like, I call it like otherworldly energy. Okay. Some other folks call it the crackhead energy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a less cool name. Present. Shop but, crackhead, right, present. but if you know that that term, that's what I'm talking about. That energy that you're just like crazier than the next person. For why? I don't know. We just yeah. feel it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's tight. And for to have that kind of enthusiasm and energy around the dance after eight years of doing it is a testament. Because I think some people kind of get a little bit burned out here and there, or it's like, okay, I'm feeling tired. Like I'm not here to like sweat my ass off or like, I'm not here to like totally, you know, blow my lungs out. But when you, when you, it's something special when you feel, you're actually feeling the music, you're, you're energized by it and you have those emotional responses still about the dance. It just shows how how big of a part it is in your life. Big of a part. Yeah. Yeah. I think I said that right. Part you know of my I mean? identity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Never expected it to be. I was just making cool little videos and posted them online. And here I am eight years later, like teaching and leading a community and, you know, doing it in this way that you're saying, which is becomes like a discipline, a practice. I never thought I would be here, but it's awesome yeah <laughs> it's yeah awesome. i'm sure there are many many pleasant surprises like along the way just immersing yourself in this culture in this dance in this community so um and i think it takes us all by by surprise but before that you know what i mean you probably didn't realize that the fruits of your labor would would really come to this so what did what did life before shuffling look like you know what why did you gravitate towards it obviously you know you were drawn to a technical aspect of it but what made you like what were what were the what was the lead up that made you kind of gravitate towards it to begin with like was there something missing in your life like um what what was that lead up to the first initial uh t-step or running man that you ever did i've been dancing since i was in my mother's belly my mother um was almost a professional dancer. Her mother didn't allow her to. Mm. She encouraged me though to always pursue dance. My um, aunt, she was a street dancer. She taught me how to dance reggaeton when I was just like six years old, like really little. So I've been always dancing. Um, however, I grew up and I wanted to pursue it more, but I was an immigrant. Um, mm -hmm. I was an illegal immigrant. So the opportunities that I did have to let's say be a background dancer for artists, I couldn't travel. Mm -hmm. I couldn't go anywhere. Um, while this is happening, I was experiencing depression, anxiety a lot as a, as a teenager, both because of being an immigrant um, in a new country and just because of my general upbringing. Long story, maybe a new podcast just for that. Um, but it was. We'll, we'll get a part two. Yeah, we'll get a part two. It's, it's like, you know, moving here with just my mother was a lot leaving my family behind was a lot mm -hmm. but dance was always like a part strong part of my life but because i couldn't pursue it professionally i kind of just put it to the side and it became a thing that i just did for fun or i did on weekends when i went out so before shoveling came into my life um i used to go out dancing a lot with the underground house community in Boston. Okay. They've been going on for like 50 plus years. They are literally my example of a community and the reason and what I follow in Boston, what I do, what I do. Um, and I used to go out dancing with them and I never actually took a house class until later on in my life, but I knew salsa, I knew merengue. I knew these Latin styles that allowed me to balance with them, to move with yeah. them, to groove with them. Mm -hmm. So I was, and they're really inviting, they're really inclusive. Another thing that I really try to um, follow through with. And they were really just like, just be you. So that's where I kind of learned the freedom of expression mm -hmm. and the exchange of energy in battles. Um, we'll get into that, but yeah. that's where I first experienced battle and the, the battles were completely different than um, what we're doing in the shovel community. Um, there was a little bit more, I, I would say more of like energy exchange. It was still a battle, um, but we were just doing this for fun at the club mm -hmm. or at underground um, like secret events that they would throw. Um, so that's kind of what I was doing, but also I got married really young. Um, I left my ex-husband and I started my life from zero. 
And during that time is when shuffling came into my life. Mm, and I didn't really understand it at the time because as you as you mentioned, um, the technical aspect was what I was like. <gasps> yeah. But I understood what it really did to my mind the more that I practiced it. And it's inspired what I am doing now with everybody. Yeah. So this was about 2015 or yes. so? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. That it kind of came into the picture. Um, and you, but you didn't know the true value proposition around it. You know, it just looked like a fun, a fun dance yes. that you're probably capable of with the skills that you were learning from. Barely. Yeah. Okay. okay. Barely. I had um I had done other things to social media. I think social media is just incredible in so many ways. It could have its negative effects. We'll get into that too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I learned to like let's say I learned to handstand through social media. Like I got into my my yoga journey as well, and I learned technical aspect of handstanding i learned more about what yoga is truly about later on but but i knew that social media was capable of teaching me things that the world outside was not capable of yeah, yeah so yeah. when i found that i was like i gotta study this thing and figure out how to like bring that into my life no idea about anything got it got it so with that if, if you didn't have maybe mentors that appeared you know right from the get-go i mean it might have been it might have been like Gabby's account or or other accounts where you were finding um, just movements that you gravitated towards and whatnot. So what was what was the first like what was the ground zero of your shuffle journey where you actually started practicing? Was there anything that inspired that movement? Was it a tutorial? Was it a video? Was it a show that you went to? Also, um, and it, hopefully I'm not layering too many questions, but like were you getting into EDM music at this time as well. Like, what what was kind of like the, the the head that you came to where you're like, okay, let's do this. Like, let's start practicing. It was really gradual. Um, honestly, it wasn't just like one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been. Uh, I've always. I love getting physical. I love um, how we get the endorphins going. It makes me feel alive. Movement has always made me feel alive. Um, like I like running, you know, I like working out. I actually like it. Mm -hmm. So shuffling was like a new way of putting that energy somewhere. Yeah. It was really all about the wild energy that I've always had that I never knew where to put it. <laughs> it has always been about that. Yeah. I've always had like this urge to express myself intensely in the world. And when I didn't have somewhere to put it, I was just always just the intense person. Mm. But then I found these avenues and shuffling was one of them. And it was like, whoa, um, I, I was always into EDM music, but I didn't really understand what was what. Okay. I just like, like I went to Ultra 2012. That was my first festival mm -hmm. ever. And I mean, I loved it. It was so much fun. But could I tell you what I what artists I listened yeah. to? At I a dumpstep remember. stage. I love techno. Yeah, like. I, <laughs> no idea. Um, I didn't really understand the different styles of EDM until shuffling because I started teaching, because I started paying attention more to what I was mm -hmm. listening to. Mm -hmm. How, when the beat guided me, I literally needed to understand what I was dancing. And the energy levels of each and yeah, exactly. yeah, how you flow. But I started um, with some form of shapes. Because okay. I didn't, again, I didn't really know what I was doing mm -hmm. uh, for those three years. Okay. Then I started trying out uh, more like the Running Man, more, it was still a little bit more of a, um, a mixed style flow, but I started getting more into like a heavier Running Man. Um, and that brought a different aspect into it. I wasn't fully into it yet. It was more me just like throwing in a salad of movements that I saw, mm -hmm. movements that I did with the house community, movements that I did when I danced salsa, when I danced reggaeton, everything that I've ever danced. I mean, I've took, I've took like, even belly dancing, like if you ever catch me doing rolls, like yeah. that's inspired from that. Yeah, yeah. So I was just like, I've always been just somebody that's like being exposed to different things and bring them all together to express myself. Got it. So oh. with Shuffle and it was that gradual thing. It was more like every, every year it got a little bit more serious. Mm, mm. There wasn't like an inflection point where it's like, let's do this. It was like, it was, it was a gradual process. Yes, that. there was a point where um, an injury occurred later on, this was right before COVID. And I had to really understand Melbourne Shuffle because it was so accessible to mm. me and to my injury. Um, that was a big turning point because I had to change my flow in the way that I was expressing myself so it was accessible for my injury. Mm -hmm. So that made me sort of lean into it even harder, understand it even harder so I could still dance without making my injury worse. Can, can you break that down? Like what was hurting you and like what movements started to feel bad? What movements started to feel good? You know, why, why did you feel like you wanted to change up your flow 
Uh, mm-hmm. Like really out of necessity, you know? Yes, of course. Um, <laughs> I was actually um, making a video for one of the, the first battle that I've entered online, Shovel Battle. And I did a diagonal of Running Man and I pulled a muscle. Like it's, it was in between my inner thigh and my hamstring. Mm. And um, that was like when COVID was starting to happen. We didn't really understand how long we were going to be away. But from there on, we all sat. We were sedentary for like two years and I wasn't working out. So I couldn't really rehab my injury mm. the right way. And then on top of that, we were sitting so much. So basically any movement that um, abducted my leg would cause the pain. Got it. it would trigger it. So I could only do regular running mans going forward. I couldn't do diagonal kind yeah. of running mans. Yeah, yeah. So this was good for me. I could do this. Um, I couldn't do this for like maybe more than two hours nonstop, but I could still do it. Mm-hmm. So... That led me to understand in T-stepping more because the running man, it's so beautifully compatible with the T-step. 100%. Right. I mean, for some reason, they go together with this in the same style. And that, I didn't really understand the T-step until I had to do it Mm -hmm. because I had no option. And like most people, I mean, I look back, I can't think that I thought about it this way, but maybe a bit of part of me did think that it was more on the boring side it was more like a basic movement Mm -hmm. and i didn't really include it in my flow so much but once i had no option (laughs) i really understood the value of it and how meditative it is Mm -hmm. and how low impact it can be depending on how you do it so having these two movements accessible to me allowed me to continue shuffling while healing and that was that was a game changer because that's when i started um, understanding both cutting shapes and Melbourne shuffle separately mm-hmm. rather than together, which th- that's how many of us learn how to shuffle. Yeah, um, compartmentalize. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I started isolating them and I started understanding their um, how their techniques just are different. Mm-hmm. And, and honestly, that is how I dance nowadays. It's yeah. a reflection of understanding these two styles and they're very unique technique and what sets them apart being able to move from one to the other without losing the other technique the connectors yeah you yes. probably you probably pondered like okay where are the connections between you know this and that yes. like how do i how do i flow into one and then out and then back in and just like make it very make it very graceful so yeah and it's part of what i teach now honestly like without the injury i don't know what would have happened yeah i would have just kept doing anything almost yeah. which is cool too don't get me wrong but as a teacher, it was really valuable for me to understand the differences this way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I do feel like injuries can put you in a box, but then that bo- you focus on that box and then you get better at it. Like right now, you have so many different um, T-step uh, variations, whether that be micro bouncing or like the traditional T-step and then like all the variations within. Um, so it's like, maybe you wouldn't have all those, maybe you wouldn't have the time to like lab out on, on that specific movement. Cause there's so much that can go in, into that. You know what I mean? There's so, there's a whole variety of taps and, and, um, places where you can put your leg. Like I call, uh, when, when I'm, and I'm not teaching like a ton, but like I, when I have like a student, I always tell them like T steps, there's like a sphere coming out of your tapping leg that you can, if you can shoot your leg up, like past your, you know, you can have your knee next to your head and like shoot it up. <laughs> that's a T-step tap that yeah, you can do. Yeah, There's a sphere coming that. out of your hip that like it can go, your leg and your taps can go wherever it wants. So it's like, it gets people out of that thought. Like I just need to tap to the right. You know what I mean? If I'm going to the right or I need to tap to the left. Like, cause you can, there's a whole world, you know? Yeah. And so, um, that's I, really cool. Yeah, I like to, because that's how I I'm think about it too. Yeah, yeah, send it, send <laughs> it. Um, that's how I like to think about it when I feel like I'm in a pattern. It's like, no, I have a whole, I've got a whole thing that I can do here, you know? The only constraint is like my flexibility and mobility, you know? So um, it's very cool um, for you to see, or for you to have had that experience and to grow from it. Because everyone thinks like injuries, like injuries have this negative connotation, of course. It's like, I was injured. So, you know, my, my progress in this dance was hindered. It's like, no, like that might've been something that might've been a, a, like a weird offshoot to your progression that really helped you and made you become resourceful, you know, in in the moment. So very cool, very cool to hear about. Um, Were there any other challenges that kind of came up throughout your journey that um, you felt 
maybe did hinder your progress or maybe it was a, a beautiful accident such as you know the mm -hmm. injury the injury that you had and this could be physical this could be mental this could be you know all the above yeah no i think um a big one was the fact that and this is sort of like the elephant in the room but we all know that there's a big divide in the community mm -hmm. and we know that it's sort of like the youth cutting shapers versus the underground melbourne shufflers and all the other underground styles so me as a 30 year old coming in through the youth cutting shaper avenue <laughs> and all the older ogs being my age I kind of didn't really know where I fit in. Yeah. And before studying these styles and bringing them together in my own way and having the courage to do that, I didn't really feel like I fit in anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I was just like, I don't want to be part of any of this. I just want to dance. Um, but now fast forward to, the, to, to this moment, I see it as like a beautiful yin yang, um, cutting shapes, UK shuffle. Yeah. There's this bounciness. There's almost this feminine energy. And you can dare to agree, obviously, but there's just like this feminine energy. And a lot of people can say it about cutting shapes. While Melbourne and these underground styles have more like a masculine energy. Yeah. yeah and there's this beautiful so. yin yang like happening in our community. And it would be great if we learn how to see it like that rather mm -hmm. than like a split in the middle. Because although it's obvious to see the split on social media, in the real world, there's a ton of us that fall in between mm -hmm. that don't fit into any mm -hmm. of those two. And maybe they feel like they need to choose. Yes, whatever, a lot of people feel know? like they need to choose. Like and I saw it happening mm -hmm. all around me. People choosing one or the other. And my in my head, I'm like, why do I have to choose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can do whatever I want because I was already a little bit older than people that were just coming in like me mm -hmm. so i you know in that sense i had a little bit more experience with like choosing me above like the social pressure yeah so i think that was on my side but but it was still a struggle regardless because you still want to fit in we all do exactly so, but like where but here this is where i fit in in my in my own self yeah 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 and like hopefully you have people around you who accept you for whatever style you decide to express yourself with but i think a lot of challenges come from social media of course you know like when when you you do because you do see that that divide like you see a profile that is primarily cutting shapes you see a profile that is primarily you know melbourne or like you know moss or or, or whatever else and it's like there's a they're, they're gravitating towards one style and it's like um i i loved seeing um shout out to mizu he threw up he he's like i think primarily like melbourne and moss um, but he he threw out one video of him just doing shapes. I was like, I love this. Like, Me this too. is dope. And he's good at it, too. Really you know what I mean? Too. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I see, like, little shapes in, in his flow now ever since. I think it's just, like, a consciousness that I have about, like, watching him. Like, mm -hmm. I remember that one video when he did shapes. Like, <laughs> I, I'm looking for it now. Um, but I say all that to say, like, sometimes social media is not always, like, the best for, like, camaraderie. Sometimes it can be divisive. Sometimes it... It's like binary, like either you're in this tribe. Yeah, yeah. You're in this tribe or that tribe. Pick, you know, where it's like that That could be so far from the truth. Like tomorrow and then like also tonight, we're going to see so many different styles. We're going to see so many different people expect, expressing themselves in different ways. And it's like all that's right. You know what I mean? If it's if it's right with them, it's, it's right. It should be right with everyone else. So mm -hmm. um, could you just get into your experience with social media? Um, maybe the negative aspects of it, because we've already talked a little bit about the positive aspects of the learning, mm -hmm. the learning that can occur on there. But also, like, what it, what are some of the ways to um, have a have a healthy mentality around social media and to mitigate the negative aspects of it? Of course, um, I have bumped into this issue personally, but I've seen it more happen to people around me. Mm -hmm. And is the issue of not feeling good enough because we're not validated the way we expect while simultaneously not agreeing with the form of validation, which is really interesting. Mm. Um, there are instances when I do post a video and I'm like, two, 20 likes, like, wow, that's... But... I suck. That's, that's <laughs> suck. Yeah. Like, wow, like... But it's all an algorithm thing. And, and yeah. also, that doesn't stop me, personally me, from posting the next video. Mm -hmm. But I do know a lot of people out there that it has. And some of the best shufflers out there, they don't like to post because they work hard at what they do and they don't get the recognition they feel like they deserve. And that's a really hard topic to, to talk about because, yes, while they deserve the recognition, 
Getting it on social media doesn't always mean it's entirely genuine in a reflection of your skill level. Yeah. That doesn't mean that somebody with a, a high skill level won't get recognition. Yeah, they will, but it's not always a, a direct reflection of it. Mm-hmm. And again, I think like we're used to in, in the back in the day, you know, people that were skillful, they were the ones that got the recognition. Like people mm-hmm. knew how hard they worked. But if we're talking about the truth here on social media, it's really easy to pretend that you are something that you're not. It's really easy to do that. Mm-hmm. So when you see people that work really hard, not getting any recognition, and then you see people that are really doing the you know what they're doing they still love it getting a lot of lighting. recognition they got great lighting on they got great lighting. <laughs> you know that's really discouraging for a lot of people and um personally me it's never discouraged me because i just have this drive where like i just do what i want mm-hmm. but not everyone's like that and th- the reason that's one of the reasons that i started shuffle therapy i was inspired by all my shuffle friends who are so skilled they inspire me i get mad that they don't post because i want to see their videos yeah yeah, yeah. you know you're and being selfish <laughs> I know, like, you're being selfish. You want, the world wants to see you yeah, yeah you yeah. know but it feels like such a downer when they post and they don't they don't be seen it feels like you're being kicked out of the tribe mm. on a social level and that comes down to the thousands of years that we've been programmed um a long time ago we were programmed to be part of the tribe where we had to do the thing to be part of the tribe. And if we didn't do the thing, we would be kicked out. You know, if we weren't strong enough, we'd be kicked mm-hmm. out. If we weren't good enough, we'd be kicked out. And that's still running us in a yeah. way nowadays. And it's like being conscious of this is what might give us the courage to still go out there and, and do our thing. Even if we're not getting any likes, like it doesn't matter. We still, our expression still deserves to exist regardless if it's great or not, because I mean, even if you're not that great, you still deserve to express yourself. There is no inherent law where like, oh, you need to be skilled to post a video. Mm -hmm. So when you see people that aren't as skilled being more motivated at posting videos and people that are actually really skilled, not motivated at all, it's like, ah, what's missing here? How can we remind everybody that, you know, we can all do this regardless of skill level. So shovel therapy came about because I wanted to remind people to dance for no reason. (laughs) Got it. Got it. For no reason. I, I want to return to that, but I kind of have my own anecdote. Mm-hmm. And I forget who told me this, but um, it was like the 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 anecdote that that someone shared with me. I'm sorry, whoever whoever did. I'm not I'm not remembering. But they, they pretty much threw it back to like before social media. Like if you if you picked up a guitar in a small town, you were like and you were kind of good, you were the shit in that town because yeah. like you had no one else to bounce that yeah. off of, yeah. you know? Yeah. But, and, and you were known for that because if, if you were the only person practicing guitar in that little small town, like you were the guy, like you were the music guy and it didn't matter what level you were. But if, if you like, you were exposed to a bunch of different people and you saw them online and, and you know, they were just like getting on, on the guitar they were really killing it. You would be able to draw comparisons to that. Back in the day, you weren't able to draw as many comparisons and the comparisons weren't as readily available but like now that we're in this environment it's like we got to protect ourselves you know from drawing our comparisons like we need to have like ironclad mentalities around social media and we're just like not like kind of what you're saying we're not ready for that like our brains just haven't developed to be able to have that kind of resilience towards all this so like i just kind of wanted to share that because um, this hasn't always been a problem. You know what I mean? Like no. it's, been, it's been a problem probably for like the last like 10 years, like maybe even less than that. And it's like, are we well equipped to to handle it? Probably not. And that's why these conversations are so important, I feel mm-hmm. like, you know, to be a constant, a constant reminder for that. And then also having entities such as shuffle therapy um, to be able to combat that and mitigate it. So what is really like the mission statement behind mm-hmm. shuffle therapy and um, like what what are you trying to achieve with all mm-hmm. of it? There, There's definitely like a couple of things I want to achieve with it. But I think the biggest one is inclusivity, whether it is um, you're including yourself within your own space, like you, you have the courage to exist, whether you are a skilled shuffler or a complete beginner adult that has never shuffled in their life. Mm-hmm. So I think that's where it all overlaps. Um, when we learn to dance for no reason, that's not just like, we're like just dancing for fun. No, it's more about the mentality that you have while you are dancing. And it kind of, kind of reminds me a little bit of battling because when you're battling, um, you can't be thinking about your next move all the time. Mm-hmm. Like you have to have the ability to let go. 
And that ability to let go, that is not easy for most people. Um, so, you know, going back to my inspiration with my skillful shuffle friends, um, that was a fir- one of my first inspirations for this because I was like, how do I create something that reminds people to dance for no reason? Like post a video for no reason, do it for yourself. Um, but also um, getting people that have never shuffled in their life or danced in their life to do it mm-hmm. as a form of not of therapy yet because I'm still in school for that, <laughs> but as a form of, um, to promote wellness in their life. Mm-hmm. Um, again, not, it's not just the act of like going out and having fun. Cause that usually involves like getting drunk, but being able to just like dance at home for no reason, getting your endorphins going, maybe getting a little workout in, but the act of dancing and letting go within dance without impressing anyone, that changes our brain. Mm. That creates new pathways of the way that we think about ourselves when we're expressing ourselves, which promotes courage, which Mm. promotes confidence, regardless of skill level. So shuffle therapy, even though I do teach technique, I do, um, the funny thing about it is that I teach freedom of expression via dance okay. and dance therapy itself um that whole field none of that includes technique mm. it all is actually all revolves around no technique okay and just, dance, doing whatever. just doing whatever okay and that has been the hardest thing for me to for me to intersect mm. how do i intersect a dance that has so much technique yeah with teaching people how to be free with it got it so my training with complete beginners that have never danced in their lives usually begins with the fundamentals of just a running man and a T-step. Before I even teach them anything, I need them to achieve freedom with mm. these two moves for us to move on in the program of shuffle therapy. Some people stay there forever. Yeah. Because they want to work through their freedom with just these two moves. And that's okay. And that's okay. <laughs> exactly. And that's okay. But the idea that we have to get better, that we got to go and impress people, that we have to go like, that is not necessarily it. That's cool too, but there's enough of that in the world. Yeah, we need the other yeah. thing. You can get your dose of that wherever. You know what I mean? Yes, it's readily available. Exactly. Understand. Um, I was I was talking to another instructor who doesn't teach shuffling, teaches um hip hop, but he was talking about you know the ability. He it's interesting because he called it making choreography. Like now, I don't call it choreography. I call it expression in the present moment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I know what he was talking about. He was talking about. Oh. <laughs> Like that, exactly yeah. that, that. Going with the flow. Here, you need some help with the tape? No, no. Okay. Let's take it down. It's, it's been up for a long time. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've, we've repped. We've yeah, repped. You got it, all right. For those listening on Spotify, <laughs> aesthetic uh, aesthetic difficulties. Going with the flow. It's a, yeah, going with the flow. This is this is, this is it, right? We're repping it down here, yeah. When things don't work out, we resist. We tense up. Yeah. Things didn't go the way that we're supposed to. Oh, it mm-hmm. all failed now. It's not supposed to be yeah. like this. No one's going to watch this episode because the, the flag's flag. not up Exactly. Now. Like, yeah, yeah, no. We, we leave it there and we accept it. And how do we do that while dancing in the moment like this? Yeah. Because our dance is fast paced. We don't mm-hmm. have time to think like that. So how do we promote that? And, and that's what I try to teach people while I teach them how to dance. It's how to let go. And funny enough, sometimes I only do it with two moves. Hmm with two moves and I can see them when they're stuck in a box, when they're stuck in the new comfort level. I see them repeating the same moves the same way for a long period of time Mm -hmm. and I have to call this out. And this is not about novelty because if you dance Melbourne Shuffle, you know that you can be, you can express yourself with those two fundamentals only Mm -hmm. and literally put out a complete authentic flow. So if you understand Melbourne that way, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't understand Melbourne that way, you're like, oh, obviously they're gonna do the same thing over and over again. But actually not necessarily. Mm-hmm. People, we do have the ability to um, put out a complete authentic flow with just those two moves. 100%, we 100%, because really, really you got your arms, you have your levels, you have dimensions. your- dimensions. Yeah, yeah you, yeah, you have your own unique body structure that can move a different way that someone else can. You can perform shapes on the ground, like not shape, like cutting shapes, yeah, yeah. but movement of shapes. The traveling, the, the traveling patterns could yeah. change. Even if it's the same move, it looks different because the pattern, um, the pattern tra- of travel yeah. is different, so. It's, it's, there's, there's numerous ways. There's so many variables with those two moves that like you can, you can, like you're saying, like you can really condition someone to break out of that, out of that box if they are performing these different patterns and and whatnot. Yeah. And I have students that resist it too. They're like, when are we going to learn cooler things? I'm like, when you smile while doing this, yeah, you're not smiling yet. You look stressed. 
Why are you stressed? Because you have an expectation. Mm. Why are you stressed? Because you think you're not good enough. Why are you stressed? Because you feel like you're stuck doing the same move over and over again. And it is when I tell them, embarrass yourself. Look goofy. Look stupid. Do the boring thing yeah. that, that they're able to let go. Yeah. It's the most interesting thing. That And that's, that's so cool. Because I, I think that those lessons earlier in your journey will then give you a a higher quality and just longer long, longevity in the dance in general. Cause like you're developing a, a healthy mindset yes. around the dance, like Same not thing. to have expectations of, okay, I'm going to be doing this flow. It's like, I need to impress this person or these people or so like circle anxiety. Or themselves. Yeah. Yeah. True. Like I need, yeah, I need to like blow my expectations out of the water. No, you don't. Like, I think that's, that's a lot where a lot of like circle anxiety comes from or the just like the general performance anxiety mm -hmm. like you are doing something for someone else or for or for yourself as well where it's like then the dance becomes heavy you know what i mean it's like now i have to i have to meet these expectations and it's like i think you're training people to do it for themselves and to be to be okay and to accept mistakes as they come and you know no one knows you made a mistake <clears throat> unless you stop and look down yeah Exactly. <laughs> no one knows. It's the best. So you do these in the form of classes, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, specifically, my T-Step Thursday class, which is the most successful, literally sells out every week. Mm -hmm. That is a big component of that. Um, I do have two more technical classes, which are my Monday classes. My 545 is like just all just running around in T-Step. My 645 is for my more advanced students who mm -hmm. just, just want to hit combos because they feel they already bring the dance already brings them joy without doing cool moves. Got it. So I invite them to that. But really, anybody can come to any of my classes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. But my privates is where um, it really I can help people more one on one yeah. with their personal needs in terms of where their mental state is at mm -hmm. when they're dancing. You can assess and, and yeah, kind of get I can them. assess. Yeah, now it's been a really interesting journey, and um, I'm in school for expressive arts therapy at Lesley University. So. Mm -hmm. Um, literally like the big thing of it is the process, not the product. Yeah. That is the fundamental of expressive arts therapy. Um, the therapy is the process. Okay. It's not what you look like at the end. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, and it goes back to like lean into the journey, enjoy the journey rather than destination. We hear there's a lot like it's a cliche, but it's truly is a form of therapy out there to lean into the process and let it change us versus of um, being obsessed with the destination, how it's going to look. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, that's, that's anxiety ridden, you know, just being like, okay, when will I get to that point? Yeah. Or like, what will I need to do to do, to have that result or whatever. And it's like, you're, I mean, the definition of anxiety is like worrying about the future essentially, you know what I mean? Where, where it's going to go. And, but if you're just, if you're just focused day by day on how to improve in the dance, um, and sometimes that's rest. Sometimes that's breaks too from the dance as well. Um, I think it, it just becomes a, a better time for yourself and to, to really enjoy it. It's a healthier journey. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Everybody's journey could be any, any way. Like I honestly, like I respect that everybody needs something different, mm -hmm. you know, but talking about specifically like adults that have never danced in their life. They find about about this dance through social media. So they're already finding it out about it in a place where they can easily compare themselves mm -hmm. to the people they found out about it through. So it's like, like I, I love to sort of hold their hand. Like, hey, listen, this is what you're seeing on social media, but this is what it really is about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that I think that hits. Um, and there's weight to that because social media, although we can be influenced by it, it's like it's little people on a screen, you know, at the end of the day. But when you have like a and I think that's why in-person classes are so are so um, sh like strong and influential is because like you can express you can express yourself in the in the moment, have that genuine energy with them. Mm -hmm. um, you're teaching them the techniques, but you're also teaching a mentality around it. So like they're probably going to grab onto that more than what they're seeing on Instagram or they'll have like your your voice in their head being like, yeah, that's, you know, like have a better mentality over it. Whatever you said, whatever you said to them, like yeah. it'll be ruminating. I'll give you an example. A I asked, asked a student of mine, like, oh, send me examples of what you want your flow to look like. And um, 
Love you, girl. If she watches this, she sent me videos. Shout of, her out. Of people doing choreo. Okay. Okay. And I was like, this isn't people actually freestyling. This is people doing choreo. And she's like, oh, wow. I didn't realize this. <laughs> So that's how hard we're able to be on ourselves. Yeah. If we don't really realize what we're coming into. Mm -hmm. This world where a lot of people work really hard to dance the way that they dance online. They work really hard. Mm -hmm. It's also hard to compare yourself to that when they've been doing it for years and even before. And you're just somebody that's never danced before. Yeah. yeah you yeah, know? Yeah. But social media makes things look really easy. That's what's going on with that. I understand. I understand. I, I just have a curiosity mm -hmm. question. Um, how long have you been teaching and being consistent with it because it seems like yeah like you, if you have is thursday t-steps thursday t-step class gets sold out every single time um that's interesting like there's a hub for people to come together and learn learn in this way in a pro-social way you know what i mean it's it's not just it's not just about the dance it's also about you know the mental aspect they love of it. it i have to kick them out at the end <laughs> <laughs> i'm like let's gotta go home let's go yeah 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 we only have so much time <laughs> yeah how long have you been doing this for and like how kind of i guess how did that how did that start yeah so teaching like about four years okay the week that quarantine hit my it was actually called shuffle power back then mm. it was on thursdays as well i'd had 20 people in my class and virtual no in person oh okay got i've it. never had 20 people i don't have a large following you guys know you i mean ten thousand is a lot for some people but it's in general speaking i don't yeah and so for me to gather 20 people um for this class i was like and then COVID hit mm, okay and i lost all of that i lost the progress i had been teaching a year probably before COVID hit mm -hmm. that class but the last four years has been solid both um, for privates and group classes as well. During COVID, I did do it a little bit online. I'm not a huge fan. I really want to. I'm not a huge fan of teaching online because mm -hmm. I like to read people's energy um, and I like to see people's faces to see where, how this is making them feel. Yeah. Online is really hard for me because of that. But um, I do promise that if I gather enough students online, maybe I will someday. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that, that is tough though, not to have that feedback loop. You know what I mean? Yeah, to make, have you do a better job because you're just like you're able to assess in the moment exactly because i create a space and i'm, I'm weaving this space mm -hmm. as i'm teaching people so if i don't know how people are feeling i don't know what space to weave for them yeah 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 100 100 percent. there's something to say about in-person interactions hence the podcast right. hence why i haven't had you on a virtual <laughs> yeah, conversation we would have done this like so much so much earlier if like that was the vibe, but like, no, I want, I want to wait for, you know, these kind of moments and, and whatnot. Um, so it's, and that goes for teaching and instructing as well. It's like, you just can't really pick up on, on how someone's feeling and, you know, where to, what direction to take things if you're not, if you're not there in person uh, with them and everyone learns like a little bit differently yes, too. Exactly. And, you know, um, but, but there is one thing that I know we talked about this offline that um, you're teaching a lot of adults who are who are coming into, and you mentioned that a little bit um, earlier in the conversation. This is like a very, I feel like youth-driven um, uh, dance. Like a lot of a lot of younger of the younger crowd, like we talked about, like Cutting Shapes Medellin. Like the, it, you knew them even younger than yeah. when we went to that meetup and and hung with them. But like, how do you kind of handle um, the adults coming into the scene? outside of like that, the youthful energy. Um, and like, yeah, what, what, what specifically are you teaching them and um, helping them with, especially with shuffle therapy and things like that? Of course, so once we're older, um, there are more stressors in our life. Learning something new is a lot harder. Mm -hmm. So when you see a beginner that follows shufflers that has been learning shuffling online, that beginner looks completely different than an adult beginner that does not follow shufflers online, that has never tried it on their own. They're two completely beginners. Mm -hmm. So I sort of think about the old school way of teaching dance, which is when social media wasn't involved. You don't know who's going to show up to your class. Mm -hmm. Anybody can, you know, so that's kind of what I'm getting. I'm getting people that see it like once on YouTube and come to me. And they're like, Caroline, I want to let her do this. 
I have like a 45 year old student, never danced in his life, never. Spent about six months trying to get him to just listen to the beat mm. because he couldn't even listen. He couldn't even focus on the beat fully because his mind would wander off into the stressors of life. Mm. So, you know, stuff like that, you wouldn't think that I'm doing that. You think that I'm just teaching people how to run a man and T set. Yeah, they you know, get it, they get it. Yeah, they, don't, they, they get don't. it, they get yeah. it. No, I promise people, I'm like, I don't care what it takes me. <laughs> We're going to do the same thing the whole time. You think I'm bored? No, yeah. I love this. <laughs> I can teach somebody the tea step for a year. Mm -hmm. I love this so much. And I love seeing people do things that they did not think it was possible. It is extremely inspirational for me. Um, I've taught a tea step to a 55 year old, you know, um, that's all she could do because she had like problems with um, her anatomy Okay. by that age. Like maybe her knee hurt. I can't remember right now. But she was able to catch a groove mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. feel good, get her endorphins going and enjoy the music that we dance to or her own music because you can really shuffle to anything. Yeah. Yeah. So um, shuffle, um, teaching adults how to shuffle has been one of my main focus, because as you mentioned, shuffling is really done mostly by younger peeps. Um, so it's like, how do we include older people? How do we make it accessible to mm -hmm. them? Without it being a thing, like you just said, can you do it? No, you can't. So it's not meant for you then. Yeah. 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 And outcasted. Outcasted. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And I, I think that um, a lot of shuffle classes can come off like that. Mm -hmm. If they don't have somebody in their ear telling them, you know, it's it's okay. This is just hard. Yeah. <laughs> this is just hard. Yeah. Um, and it is hard. I know it comes really easy for a lot of people. But from what I've seen teaching people that don't really dance, that aren't really in social media, for the average human adult, shuffling is excruciatingly pain painful, mentally and physically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I am there for that. That is the space that I weave, an inclusive space for people, for them to learn regardless of their abilities and their age and what they feel about themselves. Yeah, yeah. I, and, and I can really appreciate that because I can just think of how many examples are out there where someone someone went to a choreo class and it's like we're just here to learn the choreo it doesn't matter where you're starting like you pick this class this is what we're doing and it's like someone went because and this has been me i go to the choreo class not getting it didn't even get the first eight count and it's like we're moving on you know and then it's like i'm sitting there frustrated uh, and and i feel like i'm a pretty competent dancer as well like maybe we're just doing things kind of out of my my wheelhouse mm -hmm. but also, like the other people who are in that class that are maybe like behind me or whatever, and they're not getting it as well. And like, that's the data point for them that dissuades them from even trying even more. It's like, OK, well, I sucked at the choreo class. I'm not getting I'm not getting this. Therefore, like, I'm just not a shuffler. Like, I will not I won't identify with it. So it's like I love that you have classes that are that can be like it seems like you're always assessing you know your class and where they're at and what they need um instead of having a set um you know, i'm sure you do you have a set class structure but you're willing to like you know work with people yeah. you know and you can you can kind of read the room um, i was going to say a lot of shovel teachers and i hope some of you are watching do not read the room and that is really worrisome because I mean, people don't have to succeed at what you're doing, but you should definitely notice. Mm -hmm. So then afterwards, you can give them a little, you know, hope like, hey, this is hard. It's OK. Yeah. Don't give up. Yeah. I give this speech before every single one of my harder classes. Mm -hmm. I think that everyone who's paying for a dance class in general should leave the room with something like whether that be you nailed the choreo whether that be a new friend whether that right. be encouragement to keep going you know what i mean or or to lower maybe like lowered expectations and things like that a calibration of their mindset like all these things are value propositions during a class so it's like if they leave with nothing number one they're not incentivized to come back number right. two that's a potential candidate to join shuffling which has so many other valuable aspects to it that now that's been squashed, you know what I mean? So it's like sometimes these classes are very make it, make or break for a two B shufflers. Um, and then they just don't see the other side. And it's like, that's a damn shame because you can probably look back in your journey. I can probably look back at, in my journey and just be like, wow, I've gotten so much out of this. And like, maybe there were times where it was like, it was, it wasn't easy. You know what I mean? And like, we could have quit. And, but yes. we didn't. And mm -hmm. it's like, now we are on the other side of it. 
we're flowing, we're doing, we're doing what we do, Te- like teaching, we're, we're able to share this with other people. And it's like, if we never had that capability, maybe we'd be freaking lost in life. You know what I mean? It's like now, now like someone else might not have that opportunity too. So it's sad to, it's sad to hear about. So, and I say all that to say, like, I really appreciate like what you're doing for this demographic, yeah. you know what I mean? Cause um, it could, it could be a, div- a divert path, like whether they keep doing it or, or like they just drop it for the rest of their life, you know? So. I think I have, um, you know, teachers out there, if you teach, um, don't shy away from sharing what you know, just because you don't have a big following. Because uh, yes, online you'll get good students. Of course, people that are already into it. But you know how many people are out there on TikTok like, what is this? How do I learn this? Mm-hmm. There is a huge market for people like that, that have never done it before, that need people that really can read the room when they need it. Mm-hmm. You know, and if you're up for that, oh, it'll be entirely gratifying. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like you're making a very strong impact on, on yeah. someone's life. So. Very cool to hear about, um, and thank you for sharing. Um, you know all, all your teaching experience and how long you've been doing it, and what your what the, really the mission statement is behind it. And I'm sure I'm sure that teaching has made you a better dancer and a better shuffler, better choreographer, better freestyle, all these things, and perhaps a better battler as well, um, based off of the experience that you had at ShuffleCon. So I kind of want to dig into that a <laughs> little bit. Um, I I know that um, uh, you. You, you say you have a lot of enthusiasm for, for just like the dance, life in general, you want to make an impact, you want to express yourself. Um, and it seems like you had like this untamed energy that you released at ShuffleCon, um, as we kind of talked about offline. So can you just kind of give your experience um, throughout those battles? So, uh, for those who don't know and watch the ShuffleCon recap, if you haven't already, um, but ShuffleCon was a convention for shufflers by shufflers, there was a tournament involved, there were showcases, there were crews and communities representing, and then there was a huge party at the end where we all just got down and connected. But you were very much um, a key component of the battles, um, getting pretty far um, throughout. Um, So please, the floor is yours. What was kind of like your experience throughout that time and what did it mean to you? Yeah, so first off, I have to say that to me, before these battles, what I do with shuffle therapy and battling were polar opposites. <laughs> That's what it was to me. I've never been a competitive person. I don't like who I am when I'm in competition. It makes me feel ugly inside. It causes me to go into flight and fight mode. Mm. I did not like it. So I was refusing to battle for a while, but um, I went through a breakup. Me and my ex broke up. And I'm the kind of person that if, like, if I'm going through like a really dark time in my life, I'm like, let me make it a little darker. <laughs> so let's see how deep it goes. Let's go. see how deep I can go. <laughs> so one day I woke up. I was like, Carolina, you said you were never going to paddle. You should just do it. There was like a voice inside my head. I remember it. It like, mm. just came to me one morning. I'm like, Carolina, why don't you just do it? Yeah. What, are you, what else can you lose? You lost a whole relationship. <laughs> what else can you lose? Like, you know? So I was like, let me sign up. Whatever. So I went in there and like, I didn't even eat enough. I was like, mentally, I was going in there to do something new, to create a new possibility in my brain. I'm all about new pathways, new memories, new associations Mm -hmm. with people. Um, Just bringing myself into a new refreshing space that took me away from my sufferings at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, I was enthusiastic, I was smiling. Uh, People around me were really nervous and I was like, why? Mm But again, it wasn't that serious to me. I was in a different headspace for it. I really just wanted to have fun and try something new. So ended up in the top four. That was like four rounds of shuffling that I was not ready for in terms of stacks, number one. (laughs) By the last round that I lost, I mean, I was hangry. I was like ready to go. But I discovered something really special in is the overlapping of expression for no reason and battling yeah right where does it come together where does it intersect and it's that the fact when you're and you can look at battle in in various ways by the way it's all valid but for me i understood that it was a really just a moment to fully let it all go 
And I do this already in my personal practice when I dance by myself. Mm -hmm. I let it all go. So letting it all go um, in front of a lot of people, you would think that that was like scary. But actually, it was cool to me because it was like, okay, everyone's going to see me letting it all go. Like I have, there's no thing of like, oh, I'm going to do this wrong. Because for me expressing myself, there's no way for me to do it wrong. Like, yes, I felt like, oh, I almost felt like three times in my, la my last battle. <laughs> but that was still a reflection of me in the moment. That was a reflection of the fact that I was not prepared. I didn't eat enough, you know? So when that was said and done, I wasn't like, oh, I almost felt like three times. Mm -hmm. It was more like, you know, this was like a, a snap of my moment, of this moment in my life right now. And what I really discovered with this is that I found a place to put my wild woman at um as a leader as a big example to people um as an immigrant small hispanic woman you know we're known to be you know fiery or whatever mm. passionate i mean i am <laughs> i am <laughs> um there was always this thing where like i have to hold back and be a little less than who i am mm. while i've always had this intensity inside of me and i've never had a place to put it besides my private shuffle practices mm. when i let it all go so in a way i've been preparing for battle before i even knew i was in a battle um, because of the mentality that I carry through my private um, practices. And in that place is where I let my wild woman fully be without worrying that I am too much. Because when you're battling, people want you to be too much. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. Know, that's, that's part of it. Mm -hmm. And it felt almost like the battle was like a shoe that I put on and it was a right size. But I was not willing to put that shoe on at all. I was like, that shoe, nah, I don't fit that it, shoe. Yeah, it's not going to fit. It's not going to look gonna good. Fit. It's not going to look yeah, good. I, yeah. nah, I'm good. When I put that shoe on, I was like, whoa. I was like, okay, I actually, this is familiar to me. I'm like, <laughs> maybe I do belong here. Maybe I do belong here. And I'm not going into tonight's battle feeling any different. Mm hmm Maybe a little different because now people have an expectation of me. She made a top four. Oh my gosh, she she's gonna make it far. True. But I'm still gonna go in there and put it all out. Everything that I have, all my anxiety, um, my my experience with depression, I'm gonna put it all out there at different levels. I'm gonna let it come how it comes. Um, I do black out a little bit. Uh, I'm not super intentional though during battling yet. Hopefully, I can master a balance of both. But Funny enough, when I practice, I love that. I love blacking out. Mm. I love that I'm not thinking. Yeah. Many people would argue that that's not the best way to go to battle. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, I think because I've been dancing this way privately for so long. It's your default. Like, it's my default to, to and it's my into... comfortable place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a place where I'm like worried that I went there. Mm. It's a place where like, no, I go there all the time. Like. That's like, I'm familiar with that. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure if people do that while they're dancing, they're like, oh my God, I probably messed it all up. When I do that, I'm like, no, I went exactly where I needed to go. Mm -hmm. You trust you trusted trust your that. intuition around yes. like what needed to happen at that that time. And it's probably muscle memory, you know what I mean? Yes. Like you've, you've earned that. You've earned the ability to like just do blackout, you know, blackout, you, right. internal, and go internal, what, however you want to describe it. Internal experience, I think that's the way, best way to, to, to say it. But like the re, the result of that always seems to pan out, right? And it's and I'm sure it's like you you seeing that time and time again. Maybe there's a video that you watch where you're like, I was blacked out. I didn't know that I was doing X, Y, and Z, and you're like, I killed Patty, it. Patty, <laughs> that's literally every single one of my Instagram videos. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we talked about this, like even so, even the video that we showed in the beginning. I remember you mentioned because like I brought I brought that up initially. I was like, I love that video of you for so many different reasons, and I listed them all out. And you're like, I thought that video was trash when I posted it. You know, <laughs> yeah. But it's like my favorite video. You know what I mean? So it's like we're our best critic. <laughs> that, that is exactly the process of my content making. Mm. The same mentality that I use to make content is the same mentality that I'm using for battling. Got it. Because it's very like just do it mm -hmm. let it go and, and there's been times that i do moves I'm like what is this i've never done this in my life before and going there is that allows me to do things like that but when i'm fully present trying to plan out my next move i don't do i don't do me i don't do me mm -hmm. and again i think everybody is entitled to their own experience with that this just has been mine and um, I hope to find a balance where I'm present as well. Mm -hmm. But as of now, this has been my shuffle therapy. 
and applying it in a way where like I'm bringing it to a competition yeah. is pretty cool because now I have students that are, are joining in and you know they're they're training through the shovel therapy mentality mm-hmm. so like the opponent that you're going against the first round he's been my student for six months surely he hasn't I'm been worried now for a long I'm time. worried <laughs> <laughs> If he's been getting this, like, if he's been getting this instruction, like... He has been getting this. Very well. Yes, absolutely. Very well. <laughs> Quaking in my boots over here, like... <laughs> no, that that's awesome. That's awesome that you're able to provide that for others, too, because I'm... Like, you, and you even prefaced it, like, this might not be the template for everyone. It's worked for me, but, like, it seems like this theme is helping other people as well. Um, and, and, yeah, just kind of what you're, what you're talking about, because battles by just by their nature, it's like a bunch of eyes on you. You know what I mean? There's, like you said, there's an expectation to perform a certain way. You're trying to win. So like you might become results oriented. So it's like all those things that are kind of getting away from like your, your natural flow. And it's like to have mitigated that before you even find yourself in the situation is, is good. And um, I'm definitely going to be feeding off of your energy like i'm going to check in with you uh, quite a bit we're on opposite sides of the bracket so yeah. we would only meet in the finals hopefully that happens <laughs> <That'd be laughs> awesome. yeah. but this is a solid reminder for me you know what i mean to go in with that mentality and i think i've had a, a healthy mentality around battling um and i do just want to go and lab and connect with everyone but like there is there is going to be that moment right before my round where i'm just like yeah oh shit am i gonna black out am i like what's what's gonna happen you know what like what's the music gonna be like how am i gonna react to it yeah, like that's another factor for sure all these things so i'm glad that we're having this conversation i'm glad that you've kind of elaborated on your experience because I, I i think it'll 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 help me tonight but like when this episode airs as well, I think it'll be a good reminder for those who are battling to kind of have this, have this mentality that, you know, you're just, you're really just going out, you're having fun, you're labbing, you're trusting your intuition along the way. Um, I think to sum it up is the internal <clears throat> experience. Yeah. Tap into your internal experience mm-hmm. because the external experience is just a bunch of eyes looking at you and what's there. The wisdom and the knowledge from training is not there. Yeah. It's in here. So how to go internally. I'll tell you what, when I um, battled that last time, I don't remember anybody in the crowd. Really? I was was screaming my head off. Like, you didn't hear me? I didn't didn't hear anything. I didn't see anybody. It was me and my opponent. Mm. I looked at them, not because I'm a challenger, but because we're in this together. And it's a really high stress moment. Mm -hmm. And I like connecting with people, letting them know almost like they're not alone. So if I ever stare at you dead ass, like in the eyes, it's not, (laughs) unless you're a crisis shoveler. Um, (laughs) uh, I'm not trying to challenge you. I just want to be with you in this and um, connect with you, even if it, often does seem like I am just challenging people. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can can see that. I can can see that um, it, it, it might be just like, you wanting to like get in their face and like you're, you said you're fiery like you're enthusiastic about this but really you're forming like that pocket like that pocket of connection that little microcosm between um the opponents and i think that that definitely serves you because like now it's not like expectations of everyone else like at the worst it's expectations of two people yourself yeah. and the other person yeah. so it's like it takes a lot of weight off your shoulders so and if you're not used to that you're not gonna like that yeah you know i'm very like i look at you in your eye when i'm talking mm-hmm, i do mm-hmm. this the whole time so if, if you're thinking about battling you want to get comfortable with this yep. exchange of eye to eye connection because you want to do it when you're battling you don't want to like look away at the floor if anything i think that's a little bit more nerve-wracking at least for me to look away i want to look at my uh, my um, opponent like okay we're in this together let's do this yeah yeah either your opponent or like also the judges the too. judges yeah. too i did not do any of that last time but i, yeah. I will this time for sure <laughs> got it got it i'll be looking out for that and look out for me because i've been, been trying to implement that yeah. as well because like those are the people who will be basically like deciding whether you move forward yeah. or not so <laughs> definitely engaging with them is a good idea but thank you thank you for sharing your experience i think it was, it's very valuable for many people to hear um it's funny i kind of had front row seats to how you were feeling at ShuffleCon because i felt like i was checking in on you a lot we had an interview also at ShuffleCon which um, hopefully is coming out soon. I need to go through all my interviews uh, for that, but it was so funny. And uh, I hope you don't mind me telling this to the audience, but after every round, you're like, 
I won again. I, do, I just want to smoke. You know what I mean? <laughs> I just want to smoke some weed. Because yeah. like, like, cannabis has been like my medicine for my anxiety. Mm -hmm. And this thing is really anxious ridden. And I was I didn't really want to go into my first battle ever high. Yeah. Um, because when I when I practice and, and I involve cannabis, it's a slow start before I get to that point and I peak and mm -hmm. I can really let go. I needed to step into that immediately. I don't, I didn't, you don't have time to do that in 30 seconds. Yeah. So I did a smoke. So those four rounds, I was like, I was by the, by the round that I lost, I think it was the fifth. I don't remember, but I was hangry and I was anxious. It was not a blackout run. Mm. I was super conscious of how I was feeling because I was anxious. Got it. Got so it. I, I literally remember what I did. I remember everything. I remember when I almost fell three times. While it's the other rounds, I just had the most fun of my life. And I was just grooving and I was just being guided by the beat and the vibe of my opponent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you had a tough opponent too. With yes. Chris. Yes. Chris is just, and he'll be here tonight. So <laughs> like, yes. Watch out. He's on my side of the bracket. So oh boy. <laughs> Chris, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. But um, yeah, once again, thank you. Thank you for elaborating on that. I just wanted to share like a little, you know, funny interaction we mm -hmm. had. Um, uh, during that time, <laughs> but we have, uh, it's about eight o'clock now battle start at nine. So let's start wrapping up here. Um, we, we do need to kind of like prep and get there and everything like that. So uh, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I have five more questions for you. This is the world famous final five. These are the five questions I ask all the shufflers on the show. And, um, it's very fun to just hear everyone's response, how they're different from each other, similarities, and we get to know a little bit more about you before uh, we say our farewells. So, um, the first question that I have for you is what is your favorite musical genre? So in terms of shuffling, I love house music overall, but specifically progressive and melodic house music is my favorite. Um, I do love house music that has like the vocal thing going on, like they're soulful songs mm. with a groovy house beat, just because it reminds me of a lot of music that I listened to before I got into shuffling. But I also really love reggaeton and I have shuffled to reggaeton plenty of times as well. Yeah, um, nice so, slow beat to like- Yeah, really like slow beat yeah. and it's more groovy. You can like start a shuffle session like that. <laughs> So definitely I'd say house music, reggaeton, and then trance came into my life recently. I absolutely love side trance. I'll shuffle <laughs> con. I literally got like four rounds of side trance. That was pure luck because I'm so familiar with the changes in that kind of music. Yeah. So I'd say those three, yeah. Got it, got it. Awesome. Am I am I gonna see you at Dream State? I hope so. Okay. Okay. I will I'll check back in with you and, and give you a little like nudge. Like, am I gonna see you there? <laughs> <laughs> Um, awesome. What is your favorite place to dance? Hmm. I, I love, uh, dancing in front of the ocean. You know, I do live in Boston, so we have a lot of, um, waterfronts. Yeah. Uh, I love dancing in front of the ocean and funny enough, I love dancing on asphalt, which I know can be really hard on the body, depending on the shoes that I, that I use. Mm -hmm. Um, I thrive from the friction of asphalt in a lot of ways. Okay. Um, because that's where I've had to practice a lot. Sometimes when I go dance in like a slippery studio, I feel like I'm gonna fall. Got it. It's possible too, but it's, I have to change my flow a little bit. So definitely when there's like some water involved, like a big open space outside. Okay. I love that. It gives yeah. you some form of inspiration, yeah. I'm sure, you know? For like sure. Flow like water or, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I understand. Um, next question for you. What has been your favorite set, show, or festival you've attended? So I am an electric forest fairy. I went four years in a row as my home festival. Um, I can't remember what year it was, but if any of you knew about this set, you know what I'm talking about. Um, it was above and beyond at Electric Forest, and it was lightly raining. And this happened during three of their drops. Mm. I'm not even lying to you. Every single drop, it would start pouring. Like like if they planned it with the, yeah, the production and crew. And I have to say, I was not on drugs. So I have to say that part. I didn't imagine this. Got it, got Like it, got we were it. looking at each other like, did y'all just see that? Yeah. And it happened three <laughs> times or in three drops. It would just pour and then it would go back to light rain. And at Electric Forest, and that was like so memorable. However, ARC is my new favorite city festival mm -hmm. because um, it's a All small- All the great people in your Airbnb. Yes, that, <laughs> <laughs> of course, small <laughs> gathering of shufflers. Yeah. And it's all house and techno music. 
and I love house music. So it's like, this is my new favorite festival right now. What else <laughs> What else could you ask yeah, for? Yeah, yeah it, it is becoming a staple in the shuffle community. Yeah, it is. Like. I think movement and arc are going to be big hubs for shufflers. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And, and I mean, Dream State of has course. already been, you know, yeah, that's, that's why, like, that's a three that I really just want to, you know, continue to go to. Mm -hmm. Um, until maybe it starts to feel stale, but I just don't think that's any no, time in the near future. Better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Awesome, awesome to hear about. I still need to pop my cherry on uh, some electric forest. I've not been yet, oh, so bet. everyone should go. Yeah, my uh, my my buddy just went Trent um, this summer, or yeah, this summer, and uh, he said he had a great time. And I always get stellar reviews from everyone else, including yourself. So I'm gonna have to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next question for you: What is been your favorite book or what is your favorite book rather hard to choose but i'm gonna go with the celestine prophecy so the celestine's prophecy is sort of similar to like the alchemist which is about um someone's journey um in spiritual insights mm -hmm. the celestine's prophecy is basically about this guy that goes to peru because he's pulled to go there and he meets up with his friend who has this um suitcase that gets stolen that has this thing called the manuscript and from there his journey begins the manuscript um, it sends you to learn about all these different insights. I think it's been a while, but I think it's like seven or eight insights. And each one sends you to the other one. And then he ends up, it's fiction. He ends up at the last insight. And at that point, he like evolved spiritually and almost, I think, <laughs> I think I'm remembering right. He goes like, he becomes like invisible and goes into another dimension. Mm. But that is not the reason why I love this book. Although I love, I love that part. The reason why I love the book is because it taught me about energy, um, dynamics in people mm -hmm. it taught me about how people that manipulate aren't just simply manipulating for the hell of it we all want energy we all get it in different ways mm. so the celestine prophecy sort of puts it in it, it conceptualizes it in a way where you understand that you know when people are let's say seeking attention it's not that they're just seeking attention is that they want energy and they don't know how else to get it got it or people that hurt each other people's feelings it's not that they're just simply evil is that they want energy and then have no other way to get it mm. it also talks about being a victim and how when you're a victim you just want energy and you don't know how to get it so you become a victim in situations to get that energy from mm. people so the Celestine prophecy i recommend it to everybody it is so good there is a movie about it but it doesn't really hit like the book the okay. book really hits but it talks about all these dynamics and it taught me so much about myself and it brought more compassion into my life um, towards people that experience um, these type of things. That's that's the word that came to mind. It's like compassion and empathy yeah. for people who seemingly don't deserve it, but you can understand exactly. why they're why they're you know hitting life in that angle. Exactly. And it's like and it's like you can kind of forgive people for that because yeah. I think I think not forgiving people kind of lingers, you know, in your own mentee. And mm -hmm. so I, I think that's a that's a powerful lesson to have to have a little bit more grace around other people because you just don't know where they're coming from or like what, how they've been conditioned and things of that exactly. nature i'll have to check that out yeah but, check it out yeah. it's really good got mm -hmm. it um last question for you what are um if you were to put any message on the mainstream or excuse me the main stage production of a large scale festival let's think electric forest let's think uh, edc las vegas what would that message say um there'd be tens of thousands of people viewing it Doing this whole podcast with you helped me answer this question. When you sent it to me, I was like, I don't know. Yeah. It's a big um, question. It's yeah? a big question. Yeah. yeah. Um, I always want to express so much. And I, can, I think it comes down to that. I think what it would say is that the way you express yourself, you're not only just worthy of it, but it's necessary in this world. Because every day people are hiding more how they feel, are pretending are trying to fit in. And when we do all these things, we stop expressing ourselves authentically. Mm -hmm. We can't really connect with people authentically. We can't really grow authentically towards what we need to be. So if I, if I could put it somewhere, you know, express yourself, you deserve to do it, you're worthy of it, and it is absolutely necessary in our world. Got it, got it. No, it's beautiful. And that could be, that could materialize as like a visual, can material, materialize as actual words. Yeah. Um, but I, I also think that these festivals are a good time for people to be reminded of that and see others who are living by that example and also give themselves permission to do the same thing. So it's it's energy that we can all feed off of. And yeah, thank you. Thank you for, uh, for that response. Very thank mindful. Um, well, that's about... Um, it for our interview. Um, 
but before we get out of here, is there anything else that you'd like to share um, with the listeners um, at all? Maybe something that we didn't um, tap into or or just something on top of your head? Yes, of course. Um, before shovel therapy, there was Boston BPM, which is the Boston shovel community. So, uh, and Patty's wearing their jersey <laughs> now. Um, it's important to note that everybody that goes through the shovel therapy programming, if they make it out because they felt it in their heart, they get funneled into the Boston shovel community. So the shovel community is sort of like really the product of the process that is shuffle therapy got it and i'm really proud of um our community and our consistent vibe which comes through the through the way they train how to shuffle it really it starts there our mentality for the dancing it all starts there because when you express yourself that's what you're giving out Hmm. so i just want to give a shout out to the boston shuffle community and if you guys want to follow us on instagram please do so we'd love to meet you um and if you are at arc i don't know where this is airing but i hope we've met you <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll be there um we'll be you'll be dressed as um goku as well <laughs> that's Let's gonna go. be fun <laughs> yeah but just wanted to end that on that note with um boston bpm yeah and thank you thank you for sharing your local community because i think it is very special what you guys have i, I think there's a lot of like similarities that I draw to my local community, but I love that you kind of have that process, the, the process in which like, uh, not, you're not conditioned. Well, yeah, you're conditioning people. You're conditioning people to have the camaraderie that you do. It's funny how conditioning know? has a negative connotation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like, was that the right word? No, it, but it is like, it is, it, yeah. and it's okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like you're giving people a blueprint as to how, um, you know, they're, if they behave this way, they're going to have a very good experience. You know what I mean? And and so like you 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 set that platform up with your shuffle therapy classes and and things of that nature. So it's it's very cool that you're kind of like you're creating the blueprint for a community that will thrive. You know what yeah. I mean? Thrive on its own. And 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 that you shouting them out just now is a testament to that. Like you're very community centric. So yeah. you really appreciate that. Like Thank that's you. what the podcast is all Thank about. You for supporting so. us. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> I, will, I will rock this and rep it every single day. I, yeah, I, when you gave this to me at ShuffleCon, it was just like, no, this is awesome. You know what yeah, I mean? I put it on. I, I put it on right there. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I was I was flipping through Shuffle Curious shirts, or Sideshow Shuffler shirts. I saved this for last because I wanted to <laughs> dance with this uh, during party time. So thank you, thank you for this. And I'm I love that I have a little. I'm a little bit of a part of your community yeah. now. You know, just by be, by being invited um, to share Arc with you guys. Um, going to the going to the meetups. Um, you, you guys are having one tomorrow at four. Um, it's going to be awesome to vibe with everyone there, um, and then hopefully I can make a visit there as well. Please, and, and we'd to love hang. to have you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I know that this conversation has really resonated with a lot of people. We've talked about you know a lot of topics that I'm sure people have gathered a lot of value from. Um, if people want to reach out, connect with you. Um, after the interview, uh, what's the best way for them to do that? Mm -hmm. Definitely um, reach out through my personal page, um, Carol Flo. Uh, sometimes some messages slip through the cracks because I get a lot. Mm -hmm. I think if there's something more technical and more straightforward with shuffling, shuffle therapy would be the best avenue. Um, but if you want to just reach out and connect with me, you know, Carol Flo is the best way. Excellent. Excellent. Well, awesome. Thank you so much again for coming on, Carol. Uh, it was so fun. I'm glad we were able to find some time yeah, before the battles, absolutely. before all the festivities start. Yeah. So I think we're like, this was the best time to, yes. to kick it off. Yes, so, absolutely so thank you just uh, one more time. And um, yeah, I'm really excited about this weekend and the battles and everything involved. So um, let's go ahead and get our, our, our battle uh, mindsets on yep. and uh, jump into that. But, uh, <laughs> let's go, Patty. <laughs> yeah. but, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Of course, thank you. Thank you for listening to the Shuffle Curious podcast. I hope you've enjoyed the show so far. We are past the launch, and I'm so appreciative of the support that the show has received. You guys have really stepped up in a huge way, and I'm eternally grateful for that. I know this is a big ask due to the show just starting, um, and it's very much in its infancy, but any and all support would really be amazing from you guys. So I just wanted to come on and list a couple ways that you guys can help out the podcast uh, moving forward. So first and foremost, subscribing to the YouTube channel would be a huge help. Uh, among, you know, also sharing and uh, following the show on other social media platforms, 
uh, such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, but in particular, YouTube uh, will really help increase the visibility of the show and it can help to reach a wider audience as well. In addition to this, uh, leaving a review on anywhere where podcasts are distributed, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, um, can really leave a positive impression on uh, new listeners and it will help them discover the podcast more readily. Also, um, engaging with the podcast, so leaving comments, uh, participating in social media discussions, and just anything that would really help build a community around the podcast uh, would be of great assistance. And um, please feel free, you know, DM me my, my personal Instagram at Patty Creates or the show's Instagram uh, at the Shuffle Curious Podcast, with the spaces being uh, underscores. I would love to hear any feedback, any ideas, any uh, discourse around the show. Um, it would be um, an honor to hear you guys out and, and, and you know, implement, implement some of the ideas and, and the feedback that you guys have for me. Also, donating to the podcast directly or purchasing a Shuffle Curious shirt uh, would, would help out a lot. Um, there's a lot of time, there's a lot of energy, and unfortunately money that goes into the podcast. And it will continue to go into the podcast. So let's just get one thing straight here. It's really been a complete joy um, doing the show. And no matter how much or how little monetary assistance the show receives, we'll still be performing the mission of bringing the Shuffle community together. But with a little bit of help, uh, I'll be able to travel more for these interviews, um, buy better equipment, be able to compensate all the amazing people who have made the show a reality and have volunteered their time, uh, things of that nature. So buying a shirt would be much more than buying a shirt. And uh, I don't know if you guys realize, but if I ever saw someone at a festival wearing a Shuffle Curious podcast shirt, you would be my best friend in a huge way. I'd love to see it um, and I would be, I'd give you a big bear hug. So um, you can purchase these shirts on the Instagram bio um, of the show, um, also the show's website, and then I'll have links in the show notes as well. As for the donation, um, just please you know send me a DM if you feel inclined to donate to the show. Um, I will definitely um, entertain that. And if you're so inclined, that would be uh, absolutely amazing. I'm not going to create a button for uh, donating to the show or GoFundMe or anything like that. Um, it, it, it would just be a, a conversation um, between you and I. So, and I, I would I thank you for that consideration. Um, but lastly, uh, you guys have supported the show just by listening. Also listening to this whole outro, um, you know, that that's awesome. You guys rule for, for doing that. And I just cannot understate my appreciation for all of you guys uh, for being a part of this uh, crazy ride that it's been so far. Um, so without further ado, uh, I just want, like I said, I wanted to get on. I'll give you guys a couple of ways that you can support. Um, you can run with as many or as little of them as uh, you would like. But um, I thank you, um, you know, regardless for your listenership and support. So uh, with that, I'm going to get out of here. Um, please get out there and dance. Stay curious. And I will see you in the next episode, friend.